What's up? It's Jan back at it again with another nerdy bookish video. I'm trying something new this year. So I think I'm gonna start doing these videos monthly where I talk about the next month's anticipated releases for me. My most ante- <laughs> start over. Beep. <laughs> I think I'm gonna start doing these videos where every month I talk about my personal anticipated releases for the upcoming month. So this is gonna be my March most anticipated releases video. For my top 22 books that I wanna read this year, they were a mix of new releases and backlist. So I have talked about some of these books already but you know announcements keep coming out and everything and like i work at a library so i'm constantly finding out more and more new releases i decided i'd start these and it'd be a mix of genres i know some people do like specifically romance specifically thrillers we're gonna have a mixed bag as always on this channel so yeah i have 12 books on this list i didn't want to burn myself out by researching more and i didn't want this video to be too long so i'm gonna try to go in publication order i I don't have the synopses memorized for all of these books so pardon me for looking at my phone constantly for goodreads assistance okay let me know if y'all like these and then yeah i'll make sure to try to do them monthly okay the first book i want to talk about so these first few books are going to be released on march 1st okay so the first book is gallant by v.e schwab this one i did talk about on my top 22 books i want to read this year have yet to read more than then V.E. Schwab's Addie LaRue and her middle grade series, the Cassidy Blake series. I'm in the middle of Vicious. I own a bunch of her other books and I don't know if I'm pushing it off on purpose subconsciously or just like, I, I, I don't know. But I am excited for Gallant. I love the cover. I love like the colorway of the cover and I do love the premise. I know it's like Secret Garden meets something and it's set on like an all girls boarding school, which is one of my favorite settings for some reason, especially if it's in a remote like isolated location. The Broken Girls, Madam, love those books. This girl named Olivia goes to Maryland school for girls. She has her mother's journal and then a letter invites Olivia to come home to Gallant. I don't want to just read it off Goodreads so like we're paraphrasing here. Like I just feel like like V. Schwab is just an auto, not an auto buy author but like an auto interested. That was my toilet, what the fuck? It's like an auto like, hey, I'm interested, I'm probably gonna buy this book type of author, you know? Ever since, obviously, Addie LaRue. Yeah, and like, she as a person is just so intriguing. Like her posts on Instagram, her captions are just so articulate and well-written, and it's just like, go freaking off. Oh, my friend, Isabella from The Feminist Bookworm, I just saw her review, do not read the synopsis for this book. That's all you need to know. I'm gonna give you my own version here. I'm guessing it spoils it. I didn't even know she read this book. And in this journal, her mother tells her she will be safe as long as she stays away from Gallant. But of course, Olivia goes to Gallant and see what happens. Okay, so that's interesting. Moving on. Another book that I just found out is coming out on March 1st is Burning Questions by Margaret Atwood. And if y'all know me, I was in a Handmaid's Tale like obsession phase. I did watch the whole show with my ex and his mom. So like I haven't seen the, is it the fifth season? Like my obsession has died down, but I've been picking up books like Madam by Phoebe Wynn that are compared to Handmaid's Tale. So getting my fix that way. Margaret Atwood is just such an interesting human being. I want to read all her books. I want to read everything she writes. I read her poetry collection dearly. It's called Dearly. I didn't read it dearly. But you know what I mean? Okay. I read The Handmaid's Tale, The Testaments, and I just love that she made a cameo in the first episode of The Handmaid's Tale. She's just such a cute old lady. I love her. And she has another book coming out, and it's nonfiction. I know that, and her cute little face is on the cover. Just a bunch of essays and occasional pieces from 2004 to 2021. So I'm assuming she's gonna talk about yeah, the rise of Trump, the pandemic, climate crisis to fear. So she's a super intelligent human being. Like I watched her, you know those YouTube ads for like, oh, what's it called? It's like a class taught by authors online, but she had like a little excerpt about writing and she just speaks so eloquently. I just wanna listen to her talk all day. Like does she have a TED talk that y'all know about? Like let me know, link it down below. So excited for this one. We'll literally cry when she dies. 
eyes. I will sob. I shed tears for Toni Morrison when she died. I've only read two of Toni Morrison's works. I'm sure once I read more, like I'd be even more sad that she has passed, but Margaret Atwood, I just have like such a heart for Like I wanna meet her. <laughs> wow, this is getting really rambly. I'm sorry. Can you tell this is the first time I'm doing this type of video? <laughs> Goddamn. Okay, next book that's coming out on March 1st is The Book of Living Secrets by Margaret Rue, which I actually own. Hello? There it is. So the cover is gorgeous. Thank you to Isabella, <laughs> the one I mentioned earlier from the feminist bookworm on Instagram. Can we just... The fact that it comes out March 1st and I haven't touched it yet is actually concerning. I'm looking at the font and the chapter length right now. Honestly, I have no idea what this is about. I just saw the cover when Isabella sent me pictures of books she was trying to get rid of and I was like, yes, please. Like, there's a skull on it, there's roses. Like, it's just my aesthetic, okay? Perfect for fans of Hazelwood. This genre-bending page turner follows two girls. Oh, wait, yes! So these two girls can transport into their favorite books. And then there's like alternate realities and like a bunch of secrets and like shit that goes wrong because of this ability. Is this sapphic? Hold the phone. Oh, maybe not. If I do find out that it's sapphic, I will definitely let y'all know. I will pick this up. Oh, there's moons on the cover too. I'll probably try to pick this up soon. I don't think I'm gonna read it for March because it's the Tis the Damn Readathon and I kind of already have my TBR set. And if y'all didn't know, I'm gonna be a host this year for Tis the Damn Readathon. It's a Taylor Swift readathon. I'll have the announcement video linked down below. It has been linked down below in my past few videos since I made the announcement, but yeah, it'll be in this description as well. The next book that I wanna talk about comes out on March 1st is By Any Other Name by Lauren Kate. I believe she was the author of Fallen, unless this is a completely different Lauren Kate. Yeah, okay. So I read Fallen like early college and I should have read it in high school, but I still loved it. I was still hooked, but I would have loved it more in high school and the TV show or whatever it was adapted into was awful. I only watched a couple episodes of it or something. The cover is just so cute and bookish. Enemies to lovers romance about an editor, her best-selling author, and one life-changing secret. So that's literally all I wanted to know. You know, obviously there's gonna be a happy ending. Like I don't need to know the details. I just want to know that it's bookish and that it's enemies to lovers and it involves you know writers and whatever so it's about this girl named Lainey and then an author named Noah Calloway so she's like killing it in life as the synopsis says and she gets the opportunity to work with Noah but I guess they start by hating each other and then they fall in love later I'm assuming there's a reason no one has ever seen or spoken to the mysterious Noah Calloway okay we got a JD Salinger moment let's go JD Salinger like never did interviews he's the author of Catcher in the Rye but one of my professors in college, in community college, actually got an interview with him and it goals, you know? The last book that's coming out on March 1st on my list is Tell Me an Ending by Joe Harkin, which I also have. I got the arc from work. The cover intrigued me. And then I read the back and looked at how short the chapters are. And I love books with multi POVs, but this book is compared to Black Mirror. As some of y'all know, I've been wanting, I've been trying to plan a books like Black Mirror vlog. Definitely gonna have this in that vlog. I definitely won't be getting to it by March 1st. But yes, so this is like a dystopian situation at this tech company and then you follow, is it four characters? It really intrigued me because the back like goes into as detailed as you can in a synopsis in the back of the book about these characters. I love books with characters that have such distinct personalities and such distinguishable situations happening in their lives that like you can't mix them up. <clears throat> Sally Rooney, beautiful world, where are you? You just know who's who and each story line seems interesting and then they connect at the end. That's why I love the movie New Year's Eve so much. Anyway, Finn, an Irish architect living in the Arizona desert, begins to suspect his charming wife of having an affair. Oh, I also talk about this book in my 22 books to read this year. May, a troubled grad school dropout in Kuala Lumpur, wonders why she remembers a city she's never visited. Oh, that's another thing. This book messes with memories. So this tech company is like exploring the idea of wiping away your worst moments and like, you know, taking those memories away from you. And then so they're there's these four characters, yeah. William, a former police inspector in England, struggles with PTSD, the breakdown of his marriage, and his own secret family history. Love to see mental health rep. And then Oscar, a handsome young man with almost no memories at all, travels the world in a constant state of fear. I'm so intrigued to like dive into the lives of these characters and their mental struggles and their external struggles and their relationships. I definitely look out for my Black Mirror vlog. Let me know if, that, if you're even interested in that because I love the show Black Mirror and I have 
couple books that have been compared to the show. So the next release date I have is March 15th. The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. I mentioned The Broken Girls earlier and I've also read The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James and I loved both of them. I will link my Broken Girls dedicated reading vlog down below. It's spoiler free so no worries. Simone St. James now is an auto I'm interested author <laughs> so I'm not really sure what this one's about. I just know it's a thriller. A true crime blogger that's what got me first. Well no the author is the first thing that got me but a true crime blogger interviews a woman acquitted of two cold case slayings. Simone St. James is known for her dual timeline thing one in the past one in the present and then usually at least in the two books that I've read a family member investigates a case from you know 20 years ago then either paranormal shit goes down or just like they find out all these other secrets that they didn't know about their family members so I'm assuming something like that is gonna happen yes yeah, so they have in 1977 in Oregon and then in 2017 in Oregon. Oh, okay, so the Book of Cold Cases is the name of the true crime website. For this blogger, items move when she's not looking. Okay, so this is like haunted house vibes because Shay Collins, the receptionist, and the true crime blogger meet Beth, who has a mansion. Why is this so hard for me? Okay, Beth was a suspect from the case from 1977, and then she gets an interview with her, and they go to Beth's mansion for these like interview sessions, and the mansion seems haunted. Love that for me! I just love haunted house stories like home before dark that's my jam haunted boarding schools even bigger jam <laughs> so i'm all for this book and i saw like a book of the month predictions for march blog post and this was on it so like fingers crossed that that's one of the picks for march because i will snatch for freaking sure okay then we have march 22nd the bone orchard by sarah a mueller which i did talk about in my top 22 as well this one i first heard about from ashley from a frolic through fiction love her love you if you're watching but this one involves a witch named charm there's necromancy involved i don't know why i'm so intrigued by that term by that concept i, I don't know the yard of regrown bone trees at orchard house and the secrets of their marrow charm is also the only person who can keep an empire together as the emperor summons her to his deathbed and charges her with choosing which of his awful faithless sons will carry on the empire so there's all of that drama going on i'm excited for this one because of the vibe but i feel like the plot might be a little bit confusing for me personally because of all this like hierarchy, wealth, royalty, emperor situations, but it's witchy and it seems dark. So I'm here for it. We're gonna move on though, because clearly I don't know what I'm talking about. The last release date on this list is March 29th. First book I wanna talk about that's being released on the 29th is A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy I. Lynn. I do have a NetGalley arc for this. I picked it as my book club pick for April. If you didn't know, I do run a book club. It's called the Full Moon Book Club. I always try to shamelessly plug this as much as I can. All the information is always linked down below. Our live shows are always on the full moon if that works for the guest, but yeah, it's super fun and I hope y'all participate in at least one of the months sometime soon. I still have to work on my newsletter. There's been a lot going on in my life, okay? <laughs> so a magic steeped in poison is YA fantasy based on Chinese mythology. This girl is like super good at making tea or like obsessed with making tea, whatever. She accidentally poisons her mom and her sister with her said teas. So she enters this like tea making competition to like win a prize or something that helps with her mom and sister. I don't know, is she trying? She's trying to bring them back to life i think is the main goal here and obviously there's magic involved based on the title i know the second book is already like the cover reveal is out i don't know when it's supposed to come out but the winner will receive a favor from the princess which may be ning's only chance to save her sister's life for fans of adrian young and lee bardugo so keep that in mind the next book that comes out on the 29th that i'm excited about is one that i've heard of the same day that i heard about margaret atwood's new book it's called practical demonology by claire Reese. This one I definitely have to look up because I don't remember anything of it. I just, I saw the cover. It has like a skeleton on it. No, it's not a skeleton. Yeah, kind of. And then there's like muscles on it, whatever. And I just, I was drawn to the cover. It reminded me of my baby, a dowry of blood. So I, of course, looked up the synopsis and it's a chilling YA novel set in a world overrun by plague and demons and a group of teens doing anything they can to survive. And that's literally all I needed. And I was like, I'm excited. I'm officially excited. Consider me excited. So our main character's name is non her mother was infected by the demons that live in the woods reese's brilliant and original debut novel comes a new story of survival and community and just a little bit of literal guts 
So if that doesn't get you, I don't know what will because the cover is just stunning. I've, I haven't heard anybody talk about this book. Demons and like possession like scare the shit out of me, but like it fascinates me. Like I'm so excited to read Demonic Foes, which is a book Jesse got me. It's true crime about interviews with people who have been possessed or are possessed. And like that's, that's fucking freaky to me, but it's also just like, I wanna know what goes on in your mind, you know? Anyway, that's why I'm interested in that book. How about you? Okay, this one, I honestly don't even know why. I'm excited. <laughs> Clearly, I'm not that excited about it. A Forgery of Roses by Jessica S. Olson also comes out on the 29th. Myra Whitlock has a gift. She's an artist whose portraits alter people's real life bodies, a talent she must hide from those who would kidnap, blackmail, and worse in order to control it. Okay, yeah, that's what got me. That definitely caught my attention because like that's such a, a unique ability, you know? So yeah, this is the author of Sing Me Forgotten, which was one of my most anticipated of 2021, but I have yet to read it. It's for fans of Carrie Maniscalco and Aaron A. Craig. I don't know who Aaron A. Craig is, but I love Carrie Maniscalco goes aesthetic. I love Stalking Jack the Ripper. I have yet to read her other books, but I own like all of them. So <laughs> classic Jan. Someone dangerous lurks within these glittering halls. Someone harboring a disturbing obsession with portrait magic. So this bitch is in danger. Together they delve into the family's most shadowed affairs, racing to uncover the truth before the secret Myra spent her life concealing makes her the killer's next victim. We love to see it. Looking at it, you would think it's like a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but like, absolutely not. So the next one is Four Aunties and a Wedding by Jesse Q. Sutanto. This is the sequel to Dial A for Aunties. I don't remember if it was Vietnamese, Chinese, Indonesian. I was way off. So it's like a romance, but also a mix of murder mystery. And there's a lot of humor throughout it as well. I read the first book last year. I'm so excited for the second book. I gave the first book, I think three stars actually. I don't know why I'm so excited for the second book, but the fact that there is a second book and I know it's a quick read, I think that's what makes me excited. And like, I did laugh out loud a few times for the first one. So I'm assuming the second one, main character gets married and the aunties help plan it and then shit goes awry. I don't know what goes awry, but I'm sure something will. I just know it's gonna be the same humor, if not more humor than the first one. And that's what really made me enjoy that book and like obviously the Asian representation is always a plus. Okay for the last book in this list is Wild and Wicked Things by Francesca May. Also comes out on the 29th. This one has another gorgeous cover. I see the words wild or wicked like wicked like a wildfire <laughs> I've owned forever. I just see those words and those are like buzzwords for titles for me. So I have no idea what this is about. I didn't even know it took place in the aftermath of World War One. Oh dark magic, romance, murder. Love it. That's all I needed. Emmeline Delacroix is a figure shadowed by rumors of witchcraft and it's witchy. Here we go, here we go. The cost of illicit magic might be death. I'm assuming this book is gonna have a lot of like choices to be made and tough life decisions, which I love in books for some reason. I have no idea why it stresses me out, but like I like to see the end results, I guess, and what the character chooses to do and how it plays out. So I don't know, that's like one of my favorite tropes. And immortality, I realized is one of my favorite tropes. I gotta do my best and worst tropes video still. On Crow Island, people whisper real magic lurks just below the surface. Yeah, so something with the magic goes on with these main characters i don't really want to know you know like i know that sounds like an excuse for me not knowing what the book's about but like i genuinely go into a lot of books blind this is going to be one of them there was a fruit fly on my hand i'm done with life but yeah gorgeous cover seems like a fun premise it involves witchcraft, so it's all I need. If you made it to the end of this video, put the big smile emoji in the comments down below, you know, the one that's just like all grinning and shit. But yeah, let me know if you like these videos, if I should make them monthly, you know, tell me all the things. Thank you so much for watching. Hope y'all had a great day. Stay safe and stay positive always, and I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye.